Our cosmos is immensely huge. The investigation of our planetary system by experts and astronomers has been going on for ages, and the facts they have uncovered are interesting. However, even today, more than half of the planet is still unknown. It is common knowledge that every one of the planets that comprise our solar system is unique from the others, not only in terms of physical composition, but also in several other areas. The discovery of an entirely new planet at this point in human history along with all of its cutting-edge technology and advanced findings, is now the source of great hope and expectation among scientists. A body that was proven to be larger than Pluto was discovered a few years ago. This discovery was made regarding the arrival of new planets. What is it exactly? In this video, we'll talk about the discovery of a tenth planet. Stay with us to the end of the video. There's a lot of information to be revealed. Pluto was sighted in 1930 and given the status of the ninth planet the same year. Following that, the search for a new planet far beyond the orbit of Pluto got underway. The only answers available until now have been unverified stories and far-fetched hypotheses. Using the Hubble Space Telescope, researchers in 2005 confirmed that Xena, now known as Eris and ranked as the 10th planetary body, is far larger than Pluto. According to Mike Brown, a planetary researcher at the California Institute of Technology, Hubble is the only telescope capable of getting a clean visible light measurement of Xena's actual diameter. Brown's scientific team is credited with discovering Xena, and the results of their investigation have been submitted for publication to the Astrophysical Journal. Despite earlier ground-based measurements indicating that Xena's diameter was roughly 30 times that of Pluto, Hubble Space Telescope findings presented on December 9th and 10th, 2005, revealed a diameter of 1,490 miles for Xena. A group of scientists working under the direction of Professor Frank Bertoldi at the University of Bonn in Germany have had their findings published on the internet in a recent edition of Nature. They asserted they could determine the reflected solar radiation from 2003 UB313, also referred to as Xena, by using an observatory in Spain that was 30 meters in diameter. As a result, UB313 is roughly 3,000 kilometers away and has width nearly three times that of Pluto. Given that Neptune wasn't discovered until 1846, UB313 would be the largest body discovered in the solar system to date. Since it was revealed a year ago that the object UB313 had been detected 15 billion kilometers from Earth, researchers have been debating its nature. They referred to it as a filthy pebble and claimed it was not a planet. However, supporters of Pluto pointed out that this was not the case. For the first time, on January 5, 2005, Results from October 21, 2003 reveal the existence of the dwarf planet Eris. The discovery was made in collaboration with David Rabinowitz, Mike Brown, and Chad Trulio. The discovery wasn't made public until July 29, 2005, and the delay was partly caused by events that had taken place earlier, would have generated debate around Humuea. Over the past few years, the investigation team has been looking for other huge TNOs in the solar system's outer reaches and has assisted in the discovery of some of these objects. The squad's fully automated image capturing strategy completely eradicates all entries traveling at less than 1.5 arcsecs per hour to minimize false positives. As a result, the photograph of Eris was not identified during regular observation on October 21, 2003 at Palomar Observatory in California. Because Sedna was moving at a speed of 1.75 arc seconds per hour when it was discovered in 2003, the astronomers reanalyzed their previous findings with a less stringent angular motion constraint. They also went through the old images that had been filtered out by sight. The reanalysis showed that Eris was traveling through the skies in January 2005 at a slower rate than most of the other stars. Following these scans, an orbital calculation was carried out for Eris, which allowed for an estimate of how far away it was. Because of the controversy that surrounded the announcement made on July 27 by a separate crew in Spain, they had discovered a massive TNO that they had been monitoring. Humwe, the monitoring and estimating teams decided to reveal their research results on Bright Objects Eris and Makemake in July 29th rather than wait. There are photographs of Eris taken before its recovery on September 3, 1954, which have been authenticated. When more data were publicly disclosed in October 2005, they were given the name Dizomia, which is subsequently given Eris as moon. Eris has a moon. In June of 2007, thanks to the measurements made possible of Dizomia's orbit, researchers could determine that Eris's mass was greater than that of Pluto. Eris's rotation period is difficult to calculate because its luminosity hardly ever changes while it spins. 
Long-term measurements of Eris' brightness in 2020, on the other hand, yielded a credible estimate of the planet's rotational velocity, which is the equivalent of 14.56 Earth days. Due to irregular long-term monitoring of the planet's rotation, previous calculation of Eris' rotation produced highly imprecise numbers and varied by tens of hours. The duration it takes for Eris' enormous moon Dysnomia to completely in orbit around its parent body is extremely near, but not exactly close to the time estimated that Eris' rotates slowly. Eris' rotation rate has slowed down as a result of Dysnomia's gravitational pull. However, the two entities have not yet achieved tidal locking, which occurs when Eris' rotation rate is synchronized with Dysnomia's orbit. The actual inclination of Eris has never been observed. However, it is highly probable to be the same as orbital inclination of dysnomias, approximately 78 degrees in relation to the ecliptic. If this were the scenario, then in the year 2018 there would have been a continual lighting of 30% of Eris' northern hemisphere by sunshine, and in the year 2020 there would have been a constant lighting of 70% of the hemisphere. Even after 15 years of debate, scientists are still divided about whether Pluto is a planet. One group of experts believes that Pluto and a few other objects in our solar system should be elevated to the status of planets. Pluto has unofficially been recognized as the solar system's ninth planet since its discovery in 1930. However, the cold dwarf planet that orbits Pluto are part of the Kuiper belt and were not found until 1992. Eris, a celestial body, are not 10th planet. Eris should be acknowledged as a component of the planetary system. As a result, the International Astronomical Union, or IAU, altered its concept of planets in 2006, which resulted in Pluto being regulated to a lower planetary classification along with its neighbors. As per the concept given by the IAU, a planet is a celestial entity that revolves around the Sun and possesses enough gravity to prohibit other bodies from entering or exiting its orbit. Pluto fulfills the first two criteria because it is round and it has orbit that circles the Sun. This makes a candidate for the ninth planet of the solar system. On the other hand, Pluto is affected by Neptune's gravitational pull. In addition to this, the orbital path of the dwarf planet causes it to pass by a number of Kuiper belt comets. According to the new research, planetary researchers do not agree with the IAU's concept of a planet but instead adopt a geophysical and geological concept of a planet that is not limited by a body's current orbital status. There is evidence that experts agree with the IAU's definition of planets, despite the fact that it is unclear who holds a majority's perspective. Jim Bidenstein, a senior administration at NASA, stated in 2019 lecture at the University of Colorado that he believes Pluto should be classified as a planet. The International Astronomical Union issued a statement in which it stated that it supports open debate and values all scientific perspectives. The IAU's scientific decisions are made by its General Assembly meetings, which are held every three years. The term Kuiper Belt Objects refers to the aggregate name given to the approximate 100,000 bits of frozen primeval debris that gradually surrounds the Sun well beyond the orbit of Neptune. In an acidic reaction, the UB313 fan organization stated that Pluto, and not their squad, was more worthy of the title of being a KBO team. Clyde Tombaugh, an American scientist, was one of the first that discovered Pluto in 1930. One of the initial things he noticed about the planet was that its orbital plane was unusual. To be more specific, its axis is inclined at a 17-degree angle, with respect to the horizontal axis on which other planets' orbits take place. Furthermore, Due to the egg-like structure of its orbit around the Sun, it will collide with Neptune's orbit on average once every 248 years. Recent discoveries, including the first precise estimates of UB313 size, have bolstered this camp. Suppose the results of a 19-person panel called by the International Astronomical Union to determine what makes a planet are adopted. In that case, Pluto may be demoted from the elite society of the planetary system to the status of a Kuiper belt object. If this is to be fixed, the planet catalog will need to be expanded to include UB313, as well as a large number of other planets. Brown plans to use Hubble and other observatories to look into the discovered Kuiper Belt objects that are nearly as massive as Xena and Pluto. Beyond Neptune's orbit is the Kuiper Belt, a vast circle of frozen primordial comets and other objects. The discovery that the largest recorded Kuiper Belt object was a virtual twin of Pluto may further complicate the debate over whether or not to classify the massive frozen worlds that inhabit the Kuiper Belt as planets. If the size of Pluto is considered the bare minimum for a planet, 
then Xena must also meet this standard. This body is slanted at a 45 degree angle to the plane in which the Sun, Earth, and other planets revolve around one another. This is due to the fact that no one ever cared to investigate the region in the past, so it was never discovered. The ecliptic is the primary plane upon which the planetary system is organized, and almost everything in the system is within a few degrees of it. In contrast with other planets, Pluto is just 17 degrees tilted with respect to its fundamental plane. As a result, astronomers often look at the same region of the sky as the other planets when they hunt for asteroids and comets. Furthermore, the body is fainter than previous sky survey observations were able to detect. These new improvements in telescope equipment also played a role in making this discovery possible. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments section below. Also, at last, give a like to this video. We'll see you soon.